What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I think I finally figured this four-wheel drive out. Um, if you watch previous videos, you've probably seen what's been going on. So anyway, I replaced the magnets, and I was still having some issues. Um, it's really hard to explain with it all off, but um, gapping is gap is definitely everything. So you put the new magnet in, and then there's like a race cover. Um, that's what I call it. It's not really a race because a bearing doesn't go on it, but it's a metal cover that goes over it and the gap on that cover has to be, you know, precise. Um, what I did was I turned my ignition on and I put on the armature plate and I just kept adjusting, tapping that outer race until the armature plate had a good grab on it. And then I put it, uh, the Hillard clutch on it and I, I just kind of put the whole assembly together and then I would start the wheeler and click the four wheel drive, to see if it works. Now, one thing that I found out was this hub nut is very, very crucial to the whole assembly. If you have this too tight, the magnet might work and it might kick in the four wheel drive, but then once it's in there, it's stuck. Um, what happens is those rollers lock out on the Hillard clutch. Uh, I got one right here older one these rollers lock out inside that hub and with this hub nut too tight they will not unlock no matter what you do um the design is they lock in and if you want to kick it out of four-wheel drive you have to actually kind of back up so you shut the four-wheel drive off um i can kind of show you an example um when i show you you know a little preview of everything going on now the other thing is if this nut is too loose then what happens is there becomes a gap in between the armature plate and hillard clutch and then it scores it up like this you see that cut in there that is not supposed to be there so like i said this is very very crucial can't be too tight can't be too loose from what i was told and what I'm learning is it's pretty much finger tight is where you need it to be without any play because you don't want to ruin any of the bearings inside. So, all being said, I'll give you guys a little example of how this works. I'm going to start the four-wheel drive, uh, start the four-wheeler. Of course, I left my ignition on last night, so it might not start. Hopefully it does. There we go. So right now, the rear tires are spinning. in the front is spinning. Here I'm going to click the four wheel drive. Boom. There it goes. So both fronts are now spinning. Now you can shut the four wheel drive off. They will continue to spin because those rollers are still locked inside the hub. So what needs to happen, as I said, if you're actually driving the wheeler, you're gonna have to back up. But in this case, I can just spin it backwards. And that's how you unengage the four wheel drive. So again, I'm gonna hit that four wheel drive switch right now. Boom. There they go. I'm gonna shut it off. They continue to go. They will grab no matter what until you spin them backwards. And there you have it. So very impressed. I'm gonna put this machine all back together, put in the fluids, and hopefully it's time to rip.